These guys here are Formosan Psyche deer. They're a subspecies of the Psyche deer that is native to Taiwan. The Psyche deer is one of the few deer that do not lose their spots when they grow up. These guys have their summer coat, which is lighter and has more noticeable spots. And then in winter, the coat will get longer and darker colored and kind of shaggy. They're medium sized deer. The males are larger than the females and the males grow antlers. In many parts of the Psyche deer's native range, they are endangered or extinct except for Japan. They were also introduced in many places as a ornamental or as a game animal. In fact, in parts of Europe, they have become a problem invasive species. Uh, these guys, their antlers, if you look at them, they're covered in a soft kind of hairy thing. That is called velvet. Um, Basically, the antler is still growing. It's in velvet. Um, velvet was used and is used a lot in Chinese traditional medicine. And so there have been deer farms. Uh, they've been raised in captivity for a long time just to harvest their velvet. Uh, this will come important later. The Formosan Psyche deer came to Taiwan during the Ice Age also called the Pliocene, and is likely related to an extinct group found in China. Uh, they covered the land of the island. They generally lived from sea level up to about 300 meters. Uh, they lived well in forests, shrubby areas, basically anywhere that wasn't too steep and they could get food. They were also uh, a major source of food for the aboriginals and the few Chinese that lived on the island at first. They were a very popular game animal. Now, the Dutch came to Taiwan in 1624. The Dutch East India Company uh, set up its capital at what at the time they called Taoyuan. It's now in Anping, Tainan. Uh, and it was business was listed as the Taoyuan factory. Um, it was extremely profitable um, at points in time. It was the second most profitable uh, port or post of the Dutch East India Company. One of the major exports of theirs was Sika hides. So they were sold to Europe and they were also sold to Japan. Uh, in Japan, they were used to make samurai armor. See, at that point, it was sort of reversed. Taiwan had lots of deer. Japan had very few. Now it's the other way around. So approximately 40 to 50,000 hides a year were exported. And this continued even after the Qing dynasty took over in 1662. Loss of habitat and hunting pressure continued until in 1969, the last known wild Sika was killed on the main island of Taiwan. However, they were not extinct. You could still find the deer in zoos, in antler farms. Remember I talked earlier about deer velvet and on some of the smaller islands. Uh, the Mazu Islands, which were pretty much controlled by the military to act as a front line against a possible invasion by the PRC, uh, still had some of these deer. And because there was just the military facilities, they were left unbothered. So the question about reintroducing them to the wild began. In 1980, some deer were sent from the Taipei Zoo to Kimen, uh, another of those outlying islands that at the time the only access was for the military. Um, and they established their own small population there, uh, but seemed to have been forgotten about. 
Uh, records were not very well kept by both the zoos and these farms. So in 1984, Kenting National Park was formed. Uh, this provided a place where a reintroduction program could happen. Um, most anywhere that could be farmed was farmed at this point in the 70s and early 80s in Taiwan before Taiwan became more industrialized. Uh, and the center of economic activity moved away from agriculture into industry. So they took five males, so five bucks and 17 females, so does, from the Taipei Zoo. They moved them down to a controlled area of the park to act as a founder's population. Uh, this was very fortunate because in 1992, all the deer at the zoo died when they got tuberculosis. So more deer were taken from deer farms and uh, Tanghai University to mix in with the uh, others that they brought from the zoo to form this founding population. Now, the deer farms had a habit of hybridizing the Saika with maybe Formosan sambar, another deer with larger antlers found higher in the mountains, or with red deer to increase antler production. Now, in the 80s, the value of deer velvet had fallen, so a lot of these deer were not as useful anymore to the farmers. Um, so for this reason, the Kiemen group is actually more genetically pure, they found when they did testing. Finally, in 1994, 233 psyche deer were released into Kenting National Park, and they flourished lacking natural predators or other threats, their population quickly expanded to the point where in some places they're overpopulating and discussions have started about culling or removing some of them. There are also discussions about taking some of the population and establishing herds of psyche deer on other parts of the island. Overall, the deer's reintroduction has been a success. Yeah.